So what is XM Pilot? It's a means of inputting metadata at the point of record. It can be used with S by S cards and XD cam discs. It uh, can use iPad, iPhone, smart devices for input of that metadata. And again, in the VT clip that you will see, you can use those devices as a viewing monitor. So long gone is that big heavy uh, monitor in the back of the van, you can now use a nice neat iPad um, and it really works extremely well, so a, a really efficient way of, uh, of working. And it utilises the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi link on the camera and again you'll see how that works um, on, the, um, uh, on the VT clip. Um, so from my point of view, when I first saw it, which was nine or 12 months ago now back in IBC, um, and David had it um, next to the 500 and it was a very, very sort of sketchy, very working model. He was almost didn't really want me to ask about it too much. He was more interested in showing me the 500. But um, from that point on, we started working with Sony to develop it and um, you know, brought them out on location. They could see how we work on, on location, etc. And basically, it gets rid of all of those nasty uh, paper time-coded notes. So it's now electronic, um, and it really does create a massive efficiency both on location and right the way through into post-production and out the other end into archive and, and search, etc. Um, and you know we've all been there where we've done a whole load of time-coded notes from a day. The rains come down, it's washed away our notes, or we've lost it, or somebody's lost it, or they've thrown it away with the sandwiches at lunchtime, etc. We've now got it embedded at the point of record on the S by S cards or on the XD cam disc. So, and it, it stays with it through the whole workflow. So that's a, a little quickie on XM Pilot. Why is XM Pilot important? Well, let's quickly have a look at some big numbers that are going on out there in, in, in the scary world that we're now in. So we've got the number 12 and 500. This is a bit like my technology bingo game. Don't worry, I won't be uh, calling out any other numbers. There are now 12, or there will be by 2015, 12 billion devices that will have access to 500 billion hours of TV and video content. Absolutely unbelievable figures. I mean, you know, it sort of trips off the tongue, and I, you know, do these presentations a lot. But when you look at those figures, and I think that's quite a conservative figure in terms of the 12 billion devices and the 500 billion hours, because if you think about it in the world today, how many television sets there are out there, how many iPads are being sold out there, how many mobile phones have now access to that content, it is growing exponentially. And the amount of footage that we're all creating, as you'll see in a later slide, I think 500 billion is probably a conservative figure and estimate. And if thinking about it, that's only in uh, three and a bit years, four years' time. 70, crucial figure. 70% of online video uses H.264 as a codec. This is really driven by iPhone operating system and the Android operating system. So again, huge amount of video out there that has to be searchable, otherwise it ain't there. So if it's got no metadata attached to it, you can't find it, you can't monetize it. 20, some technologists predict that we're gonna see more change in the next 20 years than the world has seen in the past 20,000. I would agree with that. I've been in this business almost 30 years now. I started out in the cutting rooms of Soho, only a stone's throw from here, working on 16 mil, 35 and 70 mil. And I moved very quickly into quad, two inch editing, which some of the engineers, I don't know if Chopper can remember that, I'm sure Richard can. Scary watching these guys literally use a piece of chalk and cut with a, with a, um, a, a razor blade and then use iron filings to join it. Um, quickly, one inch came along and then a whole very amazing array, array of uh, uh, tape formats like D2, Digi, then DigiBeta, etc. So worked on all of that and then non-linear editing systems came in, Avid. And in fact, I was thinking the other day, back in 1986, if memory serves me correctly, I, was, I worked in America and I went to NAB in Dallas and I saw a then unknown system called uh, the Droid. I don't know if Richard remembers this, it was created, Chopper does. It was created by George Lucas, the then director of Star Wars, and he had got this idea to load up 2,000 feet of film onto these huge, great big laser discs. It was an early non-linear editing system, and for somebody like me who'd come from a cutting room, where literally when you put 2,000 feet of film on a steam deck and you set it in fast uh, forward, you would literally walk out the room, go and make a cup of coffee, come back, and the thing was still spooling because you needed that 
two frames or whatever it was right down the end. And here, in front of my very eyes, was a non-linear editing system. He could spool through 2,000 feet of rushes at the click of a button. It was uh, you know, interesting. And that was 1986. So um, I've seen an enormous amount of change. So yeah, the next 20 years, well, I doubt if I'll be in this business in 20 years time, but I will be watching with, you know, in my armchair the, uh, the developments. 35, really crucial figure this for, for metadata. Really, really crucial this one. 35 hours of video content is uploaded to YouTube every 60 seconds. They have uploaded, or they do upload, more content in 60 days than the three US networks, that's ABC, NBC, and CBS, have done in the past 60 years. They do it in 60 days. So huge amount of content out there that some of us want to see. I've got three children. They're continuously showing me clips of you know, cats skateboarding and uh, all sorts of bizarre things. Most of it is rubbish. Most of it is very light. But YouTube is becoming a very serious contender in um, assisting and being a, a partner in the broadcast market. So absolutely key. And I think this slide really demonstrates how we, as consumers, are adopting and adapting and embracing new technology faster than ever before. So radio took 38 years to reach an audience of 50 million. How long do you think it took television to reach the same sort of size audience? Any guesses? It took just 13 years to achieve the same. And how long do you think the internet took to reach 50 million, just four years. And I think, again, that shows that we are embracing technology far faster than we've ever done before. I sort of call this time hyper-accelerated change. And I think those of us in this industry almost don't realize how fast things are changing. You know, I look back on my productions, a piece of technology I may have used on Grand Designs or on Escape last year or on X Factor or whatever. It's redundant now. We've moved on to a new piece of technology. And we talk about that a little bit later, about you know, not really wanting to jump on the bandwagon all the time with new technology because you know your mind would just get fried and uh, you know we can't afford it either that's the big thing as well and just uh, lastly that's just happens every second that is happening every second and that's I would say quite out of date that slide that slides about a year old so uh, things have, have moved on again from that so I'm gonna play a little piece of VT for you now to show you how XM pilot works out in the field XM Pilot changes the way post-production works. It turns a two-day long log into a two-hour job, almost automated. In fact, the only job our, our loggers now have to do is check the footage to see that it's, it's all been shot right because the logging process is effectively wiped out. The first time I saw XM Pilot was at IBC in Amsterdam and I instantly knew that there was an opportunity to use it on Escape to the Country. Exxon Pilot is an end to paper log sheets. Exxon Pilot connects to your iPad or iPhone wirelessly from your camera. This transmits video, time code, and information of which there and then you can log that clip. You can sort it into categories, you can do specific labels, good takes, bad takes, whether there might be an issue with light, any information that will benefit post-production, you can tag to that clip there and then. What this workflow allows you to do is capture all of your logging on location in a very simple and straightforward way and record that with your uh, video clips and then when you're back in post-production the whole um, ingest process becomes very smooth and quick. 
So recently on our Aston Martin shoot, I got hands-on with the iPad um, and the way in which the data is stored and logged onto the iPad through the camera makes our job so much easier and it completely eradicates the need for logging. The iPad writes the information onto the cards. Once the cards are brought back into post-production, all that information is clearly labelled so you know where, when and how it was shot and even to the extent what take the director liked the best. Instead of trawling through tapes like years ago or even nowadays shooting onto, shooting onto cards, you've got no kind of reference other than a bunch of numbers. So XM Pilot turns numbers into, into user-friendly information. So that's a little snapshot of, um, of how uh, XM Pilot works. So what are the cameras that are currently available with the XM Pilot? Uh, we've got the PDW700 and the F800, obviously using XD Cam Disc. You've got the PDW, uh, PMW350 camera, which we shot with last series of Escape. That records onto S by S. And the camera that we've used this series, the PMW500, which David has at the back. And like I said, do take time to go and um, see, because he's got, he's got the iPad, and you can see how it really works, like you saw in the, uh, in the clip there. There are other cameras. The Sony F3 will work with XM Pilot, and there are another range of cameras. So talk to David, and he'll, he'll give you the full, the full list. So what are the advantages of XM Pilot? Well, there's many. You can create templates in advance of a shoot, saving time. So for us on Escape, I know, or my team knows, that next week we're shooting three houses. We know which three houses. We've got all the estate agent's details. We can even take a picture of the layout, because some of these houses, you know, a million pound, million and a half pound, they come with a very detailed uh, plan of the layout of the, 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 the bottom of the house. The, Top, top part of the house, etc. You can take a picture using your digital camera or your iPhone and input that onto the XM Pilot um, worksheet. Um, so there's never any confusion that when you were shooting bedroom one, it was actually bedroom three. Um, and in terms of you know creating it for drama, etc., there's third-party companies out there like Adobe who are going to be talking to the XM Pilot team so that it could be worked and used in drama, feature films, etc. Speed on location, we absolutely saw massive efficiencies. When we start, first started working with it, the, uh, the location assistant who we chose to uh, sort of be the uh, guinea pig, he really wasn't sure. Uh, but through training and uh, certainly by the end of the day, he really had fallen in love with it and uh, used it uh, extremely well. So it's very effective and ease of use. And it's electronic as well. And it's, it's an automated uh, system. So 75% reduction of time and effort with ingest and logging. So a huge amount of saving. And in these t difficult times, you know, where budgets are being squeezed, I'm constantly looking about how we can save money over here to bring on another AP or a shooting researcher or PD over, over on, on another part of the production. It might not necessarily mean that I end up with a nice big margin or underspend at the end of the production, but it's just moving and being more resourceful. As you saw on the VT clip, three days reduced to one day or less. We, had, uh, we shoot typically about 40 hours per episode of Escape, and uh, I've had one of my guys uh, do uh, a complete log and ingest in uh, just under three hours. So really impressive, from three days to three hours, so it does really work. The other thing is that you can do, um, which is a question that came up yesterday, is if you're out on location, even though you've created that template you know, with the Aston Martin shoot, we knew exactly what the director wanted but he or she may have changed their their mind out on location so they wanted a big close-up of the gear stick or the steering wheel which we hadn't looked very easy just there and then to type in that and if you want to put in more detailed description when you're back at base you can add to it as well so um, you know it's it's there's multi layers and, and sort of more richness there it can be used in drama, entertainment, comedy, location, and studio-based production. So, uh, you know, once we've uh, really sort of field-tested it, um, I'm certainly going to be doing a sort of a business case for it to be used. Apprentice is, is one of the productions I've been advising with. Um, it'd be brilliant for Apprentice because uh, they shoot an enormous amount. It's a very intensive uh, production. Any questions? <laughs>